Hello everyone, welcome back to day 9 of our two week long California road trip. If you missed the last few episodes, I'd highly encourage you to go back and watch them as we visit Yosemite National Park for the very first time. This is our third and final day within park boundaries, but instead of going to Yosemite Valley, we were heading to a secret location that not many tourists know exist. This place is called Hetch Hetchy, a combined valley, reservoir, and water system. Now my brother and I had an incredible time exploring Yosemite Valley these past few days, but even we have to admit it gets pretty packed with people. That's why when we discovered Hetch Hetchy, we knew we had to see it for ourselves. How can a place this beautiful be so unvisited in a park that receives over 3 million visitors each year? Likely the most obvious answer is that it's quite remote relative to Yosemite Valley. If you're staying over there and would like to pop on over to Hetch Hetchy, it's about an hour and a half drive through some pretty windy roads. Also, the Hetch Hetchy entrance is the only one in Yosemite National Park with limited hours. From 8am to 5pm, you're welcome to drive in, but make sure you're out by 5 unless you want your car towed. Of course, this can be avoided with an overnight camping permit or something similar, so take that as you will. Hetch Hetchy Road can be accessed right outside the park via Highway 120. Then, it's about 17 miles of scenic twisty roads once you get off that occasionally transition into one lane, so be aware of that if you're visiting. Chances are you probably won't have to navigate through too many vehicles since it's such an unpopular section of the park, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of a heads up. Once you've reached the little parking area at the end of the road, there's one seemingly endless trail that'll get you to wherever you want to go in Hetch Hetchy Valley. We are here in Hetch Hetchy in Yosemite National Park. It's a very hidden area. Not many people know about it. You know, most tourists, when they go to Yosemite, they stick to the valley, and for good reason, it's, it's a beautiful area, and it's very easily accessible. But in my opinion, there's much more to Yosemite, which is why today we wanted to come explore a rather secretive spot. The beginning of the trail is a special treat, as you get to walk across the beautifully designed Ocean Essie Dam. The entire Hetch Hetchy Reservoir is trapped by this dam with a storage capacity of 360,360 acre feet. What you're looking at right now is the primary water source for 2.7 million Bay Area residents. That is absolutely incredible, and the views of the water shooting straight into the Tula Emmy River are amazing as well. On the other end of the dam is the aforementioned reservoir and two distant waterfalls. These two go by the name of Chuilala Falls and Wapama Falls. The latter is what we'd be hiking to and I urge you all to stay tuned because seeing that is an experience to say the least. After traversing the dam, you pass through an incredibly well-carved tunnel, already two ultra-rare elements of a trail not even a half mile into the hike. Then, on the other end of the tunnel, you'll begin walking alongside the reservoir all the way to the falls. It didn't take long for us to notice that this area was a haven for wildlife. Because of its unpopularity, we noticed more butterflies on this hike than probably the entire California trip so far combined. The colors we saw them in were unlike any other butterflies we'd ever seen as well. Like this one, which had an interesting black-orange pattern, and this one with white and red specks. We also saw some lizards that were absolutely huge, like I wouldn't be surprised if they were part snake. Oh, and speaking of snakes, we saw one of those too, though unfortunately it slithered away before I could get a video of it. I couldn't believe how much fauna we had just spotted in such a short amount of time, not to mention the views of the reservoir get better and better as the journey continues. Kalana Rock to the right and various other steep cliffs made this appear like a fjord you'd see in a place like Norway or New Zealand. We repeatedly had to remind ourselves we were in California, but we just couldn't believe our eyes. Eventually, we made it to the part of the trail where you can best view Chewy Lala Falls. Unlike its neighbor, this waterfall is seasonal and only flows during spring snowmelt when water from the creek overflows the bank. When it is flowing, it's an impressive 600-foot single drop before it hits a ledge and slides 280 feet further into the reservoir. That said, it doesn't hold a candle to the mighty Wapama Falls. Roll the cliffs. This waterfall is completely year-round and was gushing when we visited, but from what I've read online, it sometimes flows even more so that it completely floods the footbridge, making it impassable on this portion of the hike. Most times of year, including the time we went, you cannot avoid getting drenched by the mist. And to make matters crazier, the only way to see the whole waterfall is by standing on the bridge and taking in all the spray from the falls. The sheer size and girth of Wapama Falls blew my expectations out of the water. From the dam, you can only really see the lower portion of the falls, but the entirety of Wapama Falls, including the upper falls, middle falls, and various cascades into the reservoir, is get ready for this, 1,080 feet tall. To put that into perspective, Wapama Falls is nearly double the height of Nevada Falls in the same park. This makes it a top 150 tallest waterfall globally, which is absolutely unbelievable. This just in, we would take this over the upper Yosemite hike. It has everything. Not only does it have a really cool reservoir, slash dam it has a tunnel which is super great and it's like a butterfly refuge <laughs> so everywhere there's butterflies and there's black brown red golden and white butterflies that i can think of on the top of my head 
And then when you get to the fall, you're like soaked. And the fall is just exploding everywhere. I genuinely think that you have not been to Yosemite unless you get here. After taking in the scenery all around us, we started to walk back and call it a wrap. I should also mention that if you wish to continue past where we stopped on the trail, you actually can reach a third waterfall called Rancheria Falls. But that's a 12 and a half mile out and back journey, so definitely not worth that much additional effort, at least this time around. But from what we could tell, Hetch Hetchy is an incredible representation of an underrated gem within an ultra popular national park. If you have any time at all that you can spare, I'd strongly encourage a visit to this hidden beauty. I know next time I'm at Yosemite National Park, I'll definitely be returning. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a like, comment, and subscribe as day nine of the road trip will be out in no time. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.